I'm pretty sure like there was a quote. Bron said it like, if Bronny wanted to be a streamer, I would support him in that. Like, but Br- Bronny publicly said like, I want to be in the NBA. He did clarify like, playing with my dad isn't my dream, but being in the NBA is. And his dad helped him make his dream, you know, come true. Like, and then he he did it for himself too, playing at USC, be being talented enough to get drafted. Right. But you know, obviously there were those reports that Rich Paul was calling teams like, "Yo, do yep. not draft Bronny, <laughs> or or he's <laughs> gonna go play in Australia." <laughs> <laughs> like, no, he's going to the Lakers to play with his dad. But yeah, yeah, you know, don't touch. Uh, like, I'm 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 sure he's not hate, hating his life right now. Yeah, right. Like, being, being on the Lakers, <laughs> like. They're Absolutely. guaranteed contract. He's fine. They look, like, they look really good so far. Like he, he he might get five minutes per game and like end up <laughs> winning a ring this year. Like that's, that's not the that's worst not situation nice. to be yeah. in. It's not. It's not. Lakers looking good early on. Let's see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You're right. Oh my gosh. So they won three games in a row, right? Ooh, as at the, Correct. At the time of this recording, yes. Look at me yeah. keeping up. Yeah. Look at you. Shout out to JJ Reddick, man, turning the organization Yo. and team around. Bringing those extra. Armand, he looks like a stud. Mm-hmm. We essentially, and we're going to get to this nerd talk just for two seconds, and we're going to get to this next topic. Reggie, he essentially kept the entire roster the same. And somehow, someway, they're beating very good teams early on. I'm talking so, the Suns, the Timberwolves. These are good teams. No, yeah. So, um, because my... John is a diehard Laker fan, so when he's watching, he forces me forces me to watch the games with him, and then he just like talks and yells at the TV. <laughs> and you know, I feel like I retain information very well. So he was explaining this to me, like the yeah. coach does make a really big difference. Like if it's like if you're at work and you have a horrible boss, like no, we're yep. all not gonna want to fucking work. So like when nope. the when a new coach comes in and he's like making the difference, changing the culture, damn, Absolutely. it really is him. Like. They're posting videos of him on the court posting up like their big man and yes. like and and he's not too far from them in age. So like no. while oh, players coach. While like on, on the surface, it's like this guy with no professional coaching experience, why are we bringing him in? Mm-hmm. His relationship with LeBron. He played while some of these players were in the league. Like yep, yep. that they have a certain camaraderie, and I think he gets it from a culture standpoint. And he just also has a great basketball mind. Like I used to listen to his podcast a lot, same, same. and and the way he talked about the game in such a technical, methodical uh, like way, the basketball IQ. Yeah, it's it's roof. incredible. So like when everyone when when he got hired and everyone was like, "This is dumb," I was like, "I don't know. I kind of have faith it's going to work mm-hmm. out." And he, he he's got LeBron James's cosign now. Some people have gotten LeBron James's cosign and not panned out, but <laughs> um, so so far so good. So I'm, I'm keeping uh, my my, my, my so hopes like- high. Like, literally, I don't know, it makes sense to me, like, just better camaraderie, and then also literally what you brought up about the technicality, like, just better plays, like, just better, like, he's calling better shots, so, like, I don't know, it just, I feel like it's pretty clear why it's working, but hold on, I have to bring something up. Wait, do you do you have anything else to say about JD Reddick? I'll, because I'll, I, I'll, I'm gonna go far left. No, you're fine, I was just gonna, I was just smiling at us, because I'm like, I thought I was listening to first take. <laughs> There go Reggie right there. Reggie Molly. Oh my God, stop it. Reggie, Reggie Molly. On my Stephen A. Look at me, Shannon Sharp. I mean. Oh, that's, that's so cute. You know how they be in the talking squares on the television? That's how I felt while we was breaking down that sports topic. Oh, my smiling. God. Okay. I don't brilliant. know if I should say this because I swore yeah. I'm not talking shit about Save On or Pierre or anybody. I swear. <laughs> but you but, are. No, no, no. But this is why uh-huh. it kind of annoys me when, like, let's say I want to say something about sports. Right. And then people just brush it, brush it off or make fun of me or something because it's like, I'm not an idiot. Like, I understand. Like, if you explain something to me, I understand what's going on. Like, I'm yes. not, you know, like dumb. No, so that's why confident. I'm not with like the, the jokes aren't funny to me anymore of like, like women yo, and, and sport. Like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no. I'm like, Ugh. but okay. So what I want to bring up mm-hmm. is, okay. Is this true? Or was John fucking with me? Do you guys really call Austin Reeves AR 15? That's my son. AR. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, but no, but okay. Does that not? Am I being Look, a little too cynical? Because why are you naming this white man after a gun? Because he a shooter. I know, but like, <laughs> I know, but like the under the undertones. Yeah, nah, that's, fuck undertones of sports. Is that not weird to anybody else? That that's a very common thing. Like there was this guy on the Jazz uh, named Andrea Kirilenko, mm-hmm. and and his number was forty seven. They called him AK forty seven. <laughs> Like if you're, if, wait, if, wait, if, is if he, you're wait, a is good he shooter, yeah, yeah, white, yeah, white, yeah. 
You're is this not? Yeah, oh yeah. my god! Yeah, I'm definitely just being too I mean, cynical. No, no, right no. Like you're you're making a good point. We, we, we don't think of it in that way. We only think of it from the standpoint of yo. When that man is on the court, he's shooting, and them shits is going in. Like he's he, he's a shooter. But of Absolutely. course, there are the undertones of school shooters and all that. So I yeah. I, I get it. But it's purely in a positive, uh, complimentary way. <laughs> yeah. Damn, my love- mind is fucked up because I automatically went to shooter. Like the bad yeah. shooter, I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> okay. But there are some innocent names, right? Like we were talking about the Lakers. Our new rookie is called Dalton Connect. Mm-hmm. His number is four. So what you call him? Connect, Connect four. four. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you! Look at you, Reg. <laughs> Look at Reg, That's right? Cute. That's you cute. know, there's some innocent ones. It just depends yeah. on. You I know. love a good. I love a good nickname. You know, yeah. I love a good nickname. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. so you a Lakers fan now? Oh yeah, John made you a Lakers fan. I okay. had yeah. I have no choice. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, who else would I even like? No, you don't. You, you don't it's have. Tough. You went to the Vince Carter. You're going to the Vince Carter retirement thing, no? No, but he's not playing anymore. So I'm not about to be a freaking Nets fan. So. I mean. <laughs> No, I should though. No, I should though. If I were to stand any other team, I should be Nets because they used to be the New Jersey Nets. So, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, used to have some great times going to those games when I was younger. Man, it was a blast. How many uh, Nets games have you been to? <sighs> I, I, a lot. Like definitely Word. over Aww. over ten. Like because my my dad was cool with someone who like was a plug on tickets, so we would just be going on a random See? Tuesday night. Wednesday. That's why night, you need a watching. dad. See? Yeah, man. Oh, my God, <laughs> <Alex>. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, see, that's why you be needing them. Yo, they be doing shit like that. Yes. Reggie, smile with me. Come on. Oh, my God. No, no. No, but it's just another full circle moment. Does, yeah. does your dad know that you're like Mr. Barclays now? Uh, they know what I be doing. My mom oh, be God. watching all, all my Instagram stories and like texts and stuff in the group chat. Like, oh, Armand, have fun. Have fun wow. here. Or, or, or like, oh, I'm, I'm also pretty open with them. So like anytime yeah. I leave the house and then like. I just text him like, "Hey, I'm I'm going here for this. Or I'm going to this." Like, so yeah. There. No, but it's just cool because your dad used to be the the ticket plug guy, but now you have all these Barclays plugs. So it's just like you know, you just you grow up to be like our parents. Yeah, <laughs> you really do. Yeah, you really do. Alex was like, "See, that's why you need a dad." <laughs> <So you're laughs> <not bad. laughs> they be doing shit like that. They gonna take you to the game. I like that. I'm gonna do that one day in the future. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, man. <clears throat> so, we got a few more minutes left. I'm going to end on this one topic. We don't have to get too in-depth into it, but I do want to hear uh, you, the thoughts from the two of you guys. I am so spoiled this morning because I have the pleasure to be sitting here with two of the best writers in the city. Oh, stop it. No, it's true. Honestly, flowers, all of it. You deserve Thank it all, you. truly. And I wanted to ask you guys about how you felt about the coverage of the entire Little Dirk situation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, you probably do know now, Little Dirk has been arrested on a charge for murder for hire. And I guess the bigger point I really wanted to focus on before we got out of here wasn't so much the deep logistics, but more so the conversation I'm uh, seeing had online. And that is if um, journalists or people who cover things in entertainment should be able to talk about and discuss the things that are public fodder a public uh truth right so long story short um most of these indictments that we see rappers get into are public uh you can you can access you can assess them to the public right mm-hmm. so i think the conversation that's being had is should people discuss things that are that you can access or should they just be left alone until they hit the courts yeah I, i've I've seen the conversation too. Uh, I saw Jay Wan from the Joe Budden podcast. Right. He said something about how journalists are only supposed to cover the music. Like, don't be there, like, diving deep into lyrics, trying to analyze stuff right. and analyze right. beefs and cases and all that. And I'm Wait, like, you what? know, all these ongoing conversations about hip hop journalism have shown me so many people do not know what journalism is. Mm-hmm. We, we, we are not just music we're reviewers we cover news we we cover breaking news we we have to report on things and these things are important like th- these are federal indictments like like this this is federal. a pretty pretty big deal and mm-hmm. it's related to a rapper and a lot of the fans and readers do care about these things they kind of sensationalize it in a way for years people were saying Lil Durk Sly for Vaughn like people care about the violence they care about all all that crazy stuff so we're we're providing that information now i do think 
there are platforms, whether they're podcasters or writers who cover it in uh, ways that are not responsible. They, mm -hmm. they might sensationalize all the negative aspects of it. Um, but I think the people who are trying to give like a blanket critique and say journalists shouldn't care about this stuff or shouldn't cover it are just very misguided. I mean...